Um, thank you, everyone. Welcome. I'm Levine Bartia from Samsung Research UK. I'm going to present our project, which is running a dual Android on a Nexus 10 device. I have a few colleagues here, Srinivas and Craig, who can help me answer some difficult questions. Uh, what I will do is I will introduce the project, because I know this is quite different to the usual Zen uh, presentation. Then I will get on quickly to a video to show it really running for real. Then we'll talk a little bit about the technical challenges in achieving our results. And um, if anyone wants to see a real device later, I have one. So come and find me in the coffee breaks or something, and you can have a real play. OK. So the feasibility of this project was to try and run two Android on a Nexus 10, on Xenon Arm, with a real good user experience. Um, Zen uh, is for servers, and we wanted to see if it can run on mobile. And Android uses the GPU heavily for all of its graphics and scrolling and menus. So the big challenge is to virtualize the GPU between both domains. The Nexus 10 device we used, this is a commodity hardware and a commercially available hardware. In this case, unmodified hardware. You can just buy it from Google Play. It has two Cortex-A15s, so it's running Xenon Arm, as Stefano just said. The GPU is a Mali T604, so it's an ARM GPU. The ARM ecosystem requires many different vendors, uh, or has many different GPU vendors. So it's important that we support all of the GPU vendors for, for us to be successful. Um, memory is a constraint, so we have two gigabytes of RAM on the Nexus 10. Um, I say plenty of flash, that means there's plenty to run to Androids, not plenty in terms of the server world of terabytes. And the screen resolution I mentioned here, this is very high screen resolution on a Nexus 10. This is like four times the resolution of a smartphone. So when we virtualize the GPU and get the second Android running, we are stressing our system. It is kind of like the worst case. Okay. So how did we do this in software? So we have two VMs running in Zen. DOM0 is amalgamated with the first Android. And then DOMU is our second Android. So that's it. No more VMs. Linux 3.4, this is the standard Android Linux 3.4. And Android Jelly Bean we're running. The Zen that we're using is a parallel development done in Samsung. It's based on the Zen on ARM A9 code that we have released previously. Um, and this is modified to work with, Zen, uh, with the ARM A15 chipset. So it's a parallel development, not just for us in the UK, but also in headquarters in Korea. I've identified a few key parameters here, which is important. So the way we split the two gigabytes of RAM, we split it equally, one gigabyte for each Android and that's fixed. So there's no ballooning, no sharing. It's just fixed memory. SMP is enabled. Zen runs in dual core. DOM0 runs as dual core. But for now, for this demo at least, at this, at this stage of the project, DOMU only single core. And the I.O. The I.O. is the big challenge here. DOM0 has passed through. So we expect good performance from DOM0 for all of the I.O. graphics and display. <coughs> But DOMU uses PV drivers, and that's where the challenge comes. And here is the architecture. I think it's PVH architecture, but maybe George can tell me if I'm wrong. Um, so we use the conventional Zen architecture here. We have Zen on ARM running in height mode in PL2. And actually, this Zen on ARM is not that different. I mean, I know it, it's a parallel development, but we haven't had to make many changes to core Zen. It's just the architecture-specific things that we did differently. So we have <coughs> Linux 3.4 DOM0, which has all of the native drivers, and that's the display, the touch. Two versions of Android Jelly Bean, mostly unmodified. The kernels are unmodified, so we use the hardware support in the Cortex A15. And the big challenge here is the front end and back end drivers, because that's where we put all of our effort in. So to get the virtualized graphics from DOMU Android, we have to uh, take all of the GPU packets that it wants to send to the GPU, send them across the rings into the DOM0 back end, and then into the graphics driver. 
So that's the challenge that we, that we faced. I'll explain why and the, uh, you can see the results of this soon. Okay, so just a quick uh, overview of mobile virtualization specifically. Um, so this is slightly different to just the Xenon ARM for servers. This is Xenon ARM for mobile. Mobiles have about 50 device drivers in there. I've listed some of the important ones, everything from gyros to compasses, from GPU to USB. Of those, the hardest is the GPU. And the reason is, on ARM, we have to be portable. We have to support multiple GPU vendors, which means we are, um, we are para-virtualizing above the GPU driver layer. We can't be specific to any one GPU vendor's driver. That makes the project complicated and large, and it's performance critical. If we suffer, the user will see it straight away. So those are why the GPU is a particular challenge. And this project is really focused on the GPU. You won't, we haven't done all of the other drivers, and I won't be demonstrating any of the other drivers. It's really about the GPU. And on mobile device, we need to talk about the user switching. And I want to do this before the video so you understand what's going on. So the Zen scheduler runs as normal, um, switching between the two domains. In our case, actually for this video, we chose a tick of three millisecond switch. And that's to achieve a 60 frames per second. But actually, I think we can get away with the, the regular 30 milliseconds. But that's future work. Um, so the Zen scheduler runs as normal. The GPU is shared time sliced as normal. The GPU just receives the commands from both and just processes them and renders them. So both Android are rendering their output at the same time to its buffer. But the user cannot see both Androids and we have to interact with only one. So we, what, we have what we call a switching where we then only display the output for whichever Android the user has chosen and we send the touch events to that Android. So at the bottom, you can see two Android. One in, one's produced its blue wallpaper, one's produced its orange wallpaper. They both render those off screen to their own buffers. And depending on the user, the one on the right is the one that you will see. And that's what I will show you uh, in the video coming up. <coughs> so in the video, um, I've chosen DOM0 to have a blue wallpaper. So just to remind you, this has pass through drivers, the performance will be good and we expect it to be good. If you like, it's the reference. DOM U has an orange wallpaper that uses para virtualized drivers for both the, uh, the well, all of the drivers, but display, GPU and block driver are the main ones that we did here. I could switch between the two using two ways. There's an icon, as you can see in red, and if I touch that icon, it will switch the other domain. or I can use the volume key. We just trap the volume key press and initiate a, a domain swap. For commercial use, we can decide how we actually want to do it, but for this demo, that's, those are the two ways I swap. So I'm going to show switching between Android using both the icon and the volume key. I'm going to do some real-world use cases, which is playing Angry Birds, and a little <coughs> 3D benchmark clip. So this is just to show that when you run a benchmark, there is a lot of GPU data running in the benchmark in DOM U that we need to get across the rings into DOM0, into the GPU, get it processed, and onto the display at a very high frame rate. That's the big challenge. OK. So I will just. Before we start, I will set the scene. This is important here. Both Androids have booted. Um, so DOM0 is just idle, and I will show you the performance of DOM0 so you have it as reference. And then I will switch to DOMU, and then we will play Angry Birds. Angry Birds has already started in DOMU, just to save time, because I know we're time limited here. OK. There is annotation, so I don't need to talk. So this is DOM0. So Android is using the GPU for even this this kind of work. And here we are. This is Android DOM U. As you can see, the performance is its actually very good. Remember, the video is shot at 30 frames a second. In reality, it will be smoother, and you can see it for yourself. So this is DOM U running. We're playing Angry Birds. 
all of the graphics commands are being paravirtualized across the rings into DOM0. Thank you. <laughs> but I didn't kill the little pig. Okay, so I used the volume key to switch to DOM0 while Angry Birds was running in DOMU. This is to show we are running two independent Android running concurrently. So now I'm in DOM0, I've started Angry Birds in DOM0, and this is Path of the Jedi. So you can see a different color on the display. There we go. So it's clearly a different level. I'm not sure what my shot was like. Not so good. OK. Now I'm going to switch to DOM U using the volume key just to show you they are both still running. So these are two Angry Birds. The GPU is, is um, processing both. And I'm just merely switching the display. So DOM0 has, has stopped Angry Birds and DOM U. I'll stop Angry Birds. And DOM U is still running as normal. So two Android running concurrently. Now, just to stress the system, to show the system under real stress, I'm going to show a th clip of a 3D benchmark. This is GLBench 2.1 Egypt. So typically, to give you an idea, between 2,000 and 4,000 GPU packets are being sent across the rings every frame. So that's within about 30 to, or 16 to 30 milliseconds <coughs> in order to achieve the 3D benchmark that you see here. So everything is being rendered by the GPU in DOM0 from DOMU. And just to prove that DOM0 is still running, I just switch back to DOM0, show the home screen is running, Android is still running in DOM0. And there we have two independent Androids running concurrently. OK. So what were the challenges in achieving that? <coughs> It looks good, and that's the good thing about when it works well, it just, it just looks like normal. Um, so 60 frames a second means 16 milliseconds per frame that we have to render. So DOM, uh, DOM U Android will render each surface to the GPU, send a load of commands to the GPU. Then DOM, zero, uh, DOM U Android will compose all of those surfaces together. For this demonstration, we're also ask, uh, asking the GPU to do that work. So the GPU then composes them all into one final frame output, and that is then displayed as a frame display. So that work has to complete within 60 milliseconds to achieve 60 frames a second, which is what we expect to see. The virtualized graphics options, very important for us. We do API remoting above the GPU, GPU for portability. As I said before, many different GPU vendors on ARM, we have to do that. And Android Jelly Bean has what they call butter smooth technology, which is some things that they put in so that when you touch the screen, everything runs really smooth. And for that, they use triple buffering. So while one buffer is being displayed, there are other buffers that are being rendered ready for display in background, such that we're never kind of waiting. We're never waiting, which shows up as jerkiness. Um, we need a reliable vSync interrupt into DOM U. I'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute. Um, surface Fling in Android, which does the composition, actually it takes the vSync 60 times a second and makes sure it gets on and starts rendering its next frame when it gets that vSync. And uh, Android has what's called deferred waiting. And that means that when you give a job to the GPU, you don't need to wait for it to finish. Um, the GPU will return back what it calls a fence. And you can see that at the bottom. The start of the black lines are where the GPU has received the commands, and the end of the black line is when the GPU has signaled, I've finished rendering that. And as you can see, there's quite a lot of parallel activity going on. So the GPU can schedule all of its jobs as normal. Android doesn't need to wait for them, only when someone needs to actually wait for the GPU to finish, which can typically be the display driver. Only then does it need to check, had the GPU finished that. So <coughs> it's a way of deferring the wait to the last possible moment. We had to virtualize all of this and make sure all of this worked across both domains because the GPU is in DOM0, Android is in DOM U. So these were the real challenges. What you see below, 
The top three frame buffers, 0, 1, 2, are the um, Android composing the final output. The bottom three are the application. In this case, this is actually just the home screen launching scrolling. The vertical lines are milliseconds, and you can see we're meeting the uh, 15 milliseconds frame. So this is just scrolling Android, the menus. And our results. So I showed you some of the results, but here's the, the results tab tabled. On the left, you'll see real-world use cases. DOM0 in blue, DOMU in red. So DOM0, we expect it to be good because it's passed through. DOMU is all para-virtualized drivers. So for real-world use cases, we've hit 60 frames a second. The user won't see any difference. But as we get uh, into the benchmarks, we, we sort of don't quite hit the same frame rate as DOM0. We're still better than 70% on all of these, which is very good. The green line shows the number of GPU packets going across the rings. So for real world use cases on the left, it's typically less than 20,000 per second, which is about 500 per frame. But as you see, the GL benchmark that I showed you earlier, where we could only hit 34 frames a second, 140,000 packets per second, or two to 4,000 packets every frame, we have to transfer between DOMU and DOM0 get it to the GPU, get it rendered on the screen. And that's the challenge that we faced. So when we still made 70% of the, the success. And the event channel, I talked about having a reliable vSync. So we measured the vSync arrival that goes into DOM0. We sent it across, across the event channel into DOMU. And this is a clip of about 10 seconds of benchmark running, real benchmark running. So this is 600 V-Syncs. And we measured how long the previous V-Sync, how long it took for the next V-Sync to arrive. Most of them are within 16.6 .6 milliseconds, as you can see, centered around 60 milliseconds with a small delay, which is fine. We, we can handle the jitter. Jitter isn't the problem. But a couple of them, less than 0.6 of a percent, we do appear to be missing. Now, this could be our code base. This could be um, a, an inherent problem with our system. I don't know. Further investigation is needed. I just thought I'd highlight it, that when we start stressing the system with so many packets and events going through, we are seeing a very small percentage. But then 99.4% is going through fine, so that's pretty good too. And some of our challenges um, on Zen specifically. So I talked about the numbers of packets that we have to get through per frame. And because it's kind of like a batch job, um, we used multi-page ring. I know there was some discussion yesterday about increasing the packets above 32. We've increased it enormously above 32. Um, but because it's such a big batch that we have to get processed, it makes sense, I think. Um, we found that um, granting many pages between DOMU and DOM0 um, we cause old, and if, the, if some of those grants are freed, old grants references are reused. But the PV drivers in Zen assume linearity across, so they don't assume that old grant numbers are going to be used. If you want to grant three or four pages, they assume they're going to be allocated linearly. Um, so this is a bug that we identified in Zen, the PV drivers, and we hope to be able to put a patch through uh, to fix that one soon enough. Should we take... PV disks? Which? Uh, which were the PV drivers? Do you remember? I'll, we'll get back to you on that. Um, so we identified, that again, the RAM allocation limit of 512 megabytes today. Um, it was not a problem. We fixed it to one gig and we worked around this problem but again I hope we can we can either discuss this further or we can take this up and um, per VM interrupts a little unreliable 0.4 percent so I would say though mostly Zen is fine it worked fine we didn't change a lot there was, uh, most of the work was done in a PV driver conforming to the standard architecture as we'd expect and Zen works perfectly well on an embedded system with high performance it scales down nicely. Further work, um, we are keen, or Samsung is keen to share the work with the community. Uh, certainly the Zen changes are. At the moment, our PV driver that does all the hard work in the GPU is proprietary. 
Um, I'm here to show, you know, this is possible and Zen will work and we will work with the community to try and share as much as we can. Um, I've also shown that two Android can run on a mobile device with near native graphics performance for normal use cases, for sure. Zen runs well on mobile, on devices and tablets. Please remember the screen resolution as well was, was very high on this, so it's being stressed. If it was on a smartphone, it would be easier. And by using uh, the PV driver that we developed, no major changes to the Zen architecture was required. So we haven't broken anything. We can feed this in and it will just work as part of the normal Zen architecture. And as I said, if you want to see more, or you want to try it for real, if you want to play Angry Birds at the same time, then please just come and find me and uh, any time today and you can have a play. And that's my talk. Questions? No. I'm going to do that. <laughs> so, the, the, the context switching of yeah. the GPU, um, that was managed because I don't know if this GPU has some support or awareness of two concurrent users, let's say, or you have to do all the mapping in software and save states and even resources. How, how are you managing that between two games? <laughs> Between two games, the GPU will just see two clients using it. It doesn't know that we're actually taking one of those clients is representing a whole different Android. So as far as the GPU is concerned, it just gets requests from different clients in the same way that you can have multiple apps on your phone and they, will all, they can all use the GPU. So the GPU just sees these and it will schedule it. So when you're running to Android, the performance will drop because the GPU will have to time slice between them. And at the moment, the GPU isn't aware of VM specifics, so we can't raise the priority depending on what you're looking at. I think they're all treated equally. Thank you. Uh, well, I'll do this first. Come on. <laughs> we have enough time to cover everybody. Um, since Android uses uh, OpenGL exclusively, did you uh, investigate any of the existing OpenGL remoting technologies, uh, Chromium, uh, uh, XDMX, etc.? Yes, uh, we, we chose our own solution for performance reasons, specifically to ensure that we get real na near native performance, so we went our own route and wrote our own. Uh, how do you ensure that uh, remoted graphics operations always apply to the correct frame buffer? That is to say the DOM, you can't send something over the PV frame buffer that writes to DOM zero screen. Do you want to answer this for us? Separate frame buffer, actually. So there are individual buffers for each of the surfaces. Yes. So unlike, so we don't have FBDA, for example. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a frame buffer that is specific to one domain. Sure. So there are graphics buffers. So we have surfaces for each each VM separately, and we use Ion of Android, and we pass the Ion handles directly to the GPU. So we don't have frame buffer per se; it's just Ion buffers. It's um, a little bit different. Yeah, um, yeah the Ion buffers. I guess the name Part of the graphics stack in Android, or most of it, is, use, is in user space, I take. Uh, so did you have to modify the GPU driver to, to be able to cope with this, or just uh, an additional backend you need to, to drive? Um, we're, we're, using the <laughs> we're using the GPU drivers and as delivered by ARM um, that uh, Google would deliver actually on the tablet. So we haven't made any changes <coughs> to the GPU drivers. And we haven't made any changes to the GPU years land drivers either. The one cool. Come <laughs> is, it, is it back end in user space or in kernel space? <laughs> you can carry on, you're doing well. <laughs> right, okay. um, there 
is a minor modification to the Android user space in terms of buffer management. Um, but the majority of it is implemented via a, a server running in the back end. No, I didn't, I didn't show that, but yes. There is some user space, uh, but we haven't modified Android. It's kind of like on the side. We wanted to kind of keep it decoupled as much as possible. Okay, uh, two questions. Uh, the first question is, uh, did you uh, merge the, the uh, power overhead uh, cost by DOS? You might understand that if you uh, forward all the G, uh, OpenGL operations from uh, domain U to domain zero, that involves uh, uh, actually a do, um, a domain U to Zen and Zen to, uh, to domain, domain zero. That actually involves several of switch, a ring switch, uh, ring switch that could be uh, have another overhead. So, did you get any um, power overhead cost by that? So, you mean power, you mean battery? Power. Oh, yeah, battery, battery life. Um, so, no, we haven't focused on battery life for this. At the moment, we were trying to get the performance up to show that it's possible. But there are not that many domain swaps because we've chosen our architecture and the multi page ring. To, we have to minimize the domain swaps. That's okay. the key to getting the performance. So, that shouldn't be a problem. Okay. By synchronous, we don't need to wait for the response. So most of the GL packets you send, you just send and forget. Okay. So we can batch up a whole load of those, send them across in one big go. And then, so there's really <coughs> very few domain swaps are needed. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the sec second question is that uh, you said that uh, domain zero and domain U um, will run can, uh, can, uh, simultaneously, right? Yeah. That means uh, even, even, even the uh, domain zero uh, is, uh, is in the background, the, yeah. uh, dom the application in domain zero is still running. Yes. And uh, it was still running. Actually, uh, uh, actually uh, you could, uh, yeah, you could uh, assess on the application. Uh, in, the, in the background so that it, you can save more power. You could do. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's possible. Yes, we could, we could then further enhance it if you wanted that when you switch we can lower the priority of the background task for, for, for power, for battery life yes. reasons, yes. Because power, power and performance, both of them are the key to their yes. mobile devices. Yes. Okay, thank you. I'm just curious if you have disabled the PM power management in W and thermal management completely? The, the power management on the demo, yeah, it was not running. We just keep everything. Okay, so you just fixed the frequency as high as possible. As high as possible for, for running these tests. What about tests. thermal? Did you burn a couple of Nexus 10? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Just kidding. Thank you. <laughs> uh, yeah. That was something you did. Yeah, this. Do the vCPUs have affinity? Uh, for this, no. Um, the, static, um, the static improve performance? But by pinning, uh, I don't think... Not, not, not pinning, but, but just giving some, some preference. Well, implicitly we have actually done that because we've got dual call for DOM0 and a single call for DOM U. So one of the calls is effectively dedicated to DOM0 in the demo that you saw. And the other one, which happens to be um, CPU zero, is time slicing according to the Zen scheduler. So essentially, we have given DOM zero priority. But that's only because we're not supporting SMP and DOM U today. One more question is, um, do the system properties in Android are synchronized or separately maintained? I mean, for example, Android has its own power mode. Guest domain has its own power mode, right? So okay, okay. One Android can get sleep mode and yeah. another will okay. be awake. I, I think what, what you're going into is the battery management, which is very important for mobile. No, not only the battery management, but also yeah. the entire um, system properties. Okay. Yeah. 
So, uh, let's run Vas, you have an answer? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, yeah, the system properties of Android should not be a matter of concern because each one is managing its own properties. Even if a domain goes into sleep mode. For example, context list or, I mean, I, there are several commonly shared company system one. So, that, I think that's yeah. they can share it. Yes. Right? I understand what you're saying. So the common, for example, the power management, DBFS, as you mentioned, is system-wide property. So that's one thing that we have to work on. OK. Okay, okay one, one last. One last quick one, and then we move Very on. Quick. <laughs> <laughs> have you tried to, play, to do video playback? Uh, no, okay. no. Video playback isn't so focused on the GPU, because okay, that's yeah. a sort of separate codec. So. OK. Yes. You try. Yeah. Okay, yeah, but. Yeah. Or it wasn't just yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. Thank you for